Hello everyone, very good Sunday to you. I am Chief Meteorologist Ed Bloodsworth with WKRG News 5. We're going to go into a little bit more of an extended discussion on Hurricane Barrel in terms of uh, where it's headed, how strong we believe this will get, and uh, exactly how uh, and exactly where we believe this is going. And a new update actually just coming down in the last five minutes. Uh, the National Hurricane Center has upgraded this and now has put out a special advisory at 1035. This is now a Category 4 hurricane. Maximum winds are now at 130 miles per hour, and that makes Barrel the strongest Atlantic hurricane ever recorded in the month of June. Um, a very well-formed hurricane as the storm has been undergoing rapid intensification, and uh, the hurricane hunters and the, uh, from the NOAA and Air Force have been flying in the system and have just been noting uh, drops in pressure, and the wind speeds are really in, uh, rising here. So now, as of 1035 this morning, maximum sustained winds are at 130 miles per hour, so this makes it a Category 4 hurricane on the Saffir-Simpson scale. Speaking of the hurricane hunters, we've had NOAA and Air Force hurricane hunters in the system, and there are several more flights scheduled, but you can see here, this was uh, one of the more recent passes by an Air Force hurricane hunter C-130 aircraft showing that at 129, and then the most recent pass through the eye wall, we did see a, a speed that popped up to around 143. It's hard to tell if that's an actual gust or not, but, uh, but just, just denotes a strengthening tropical cyclone here. Very well-formed hurricane uh, this morning as it's uh, rolling on through. So there will be at least two more flights into Barrel before it makes its way through the Windward Islands. And speaking of, let's get to the forecast track. So again, now a Category 4 storm. Maximum sustained winds are expected to reach right around 140 miles per hour prior to uh, it's passed through the Windward Islands here. So hurricane warnings are in effect uh, for the islands here in the Windwards um, as the system will roll on through. Again, this is expected to move through 7 a.m. Central Time um, on Monday. So a very powerful storm working through, expecting very strong winds, significant surge, rain as well. Everything that comes with a major hurricane rolling through the Windwards. Now from there, it is expected to maintain itself as at least a Category 3 hurricane as it bypasses Hispaniola to the south. We still have Jamaica within this uh, cone of uncertainty, so we're still not ruling out a, a possible landfall in Jamaica, but most of the reliable forecast modeling suggests this will stay just to the south, and the environment may become a little less conducive for strengthening. In fact, we may even see some weakening as we move through the end of next week, as this moves through the Western Caribbean and now projecting possible landfall on the Yucatan Peninsula sometime on Friday. So this will be Thursday night into Friday as it comes ashore now towards the Yucatan. Again, you'll notice how that error cone really starts to expand. There is still a good degree of uncertainty regarding the long-term track of this storm. So one, one of the reasons why we think this will actually go on a weakening phase as it moves to the Western Caribbean. This is a look at the atmospheric moisture. And one thing that we're noting is, at least in the Western Caribbean, ahead of the system, there will be some drier air. The atmosphere won't be quite as moisture rich ahead of this, so it'll be running into that. There also may be a slight increase in wind shear as this rolls uh, through the Western Caribbean. Again, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday of next week. And this is one just model's uh, interpretation of this. So as we look at the uh, latest forecast models, again, it's still very good agreement as the storm rolls through the Caribbean here, again, mostly staying south of Jamaica. As it gets to Yucatan, then we start to see the model spread. And one thing to note here, after it passes through the Yucatan, whatever shape is in, you'll notice how a lot of these models towards the end of this time frame start to curve to the north through the Western Caribbean. And that I think is gonna be the long-term question mark uh, regarding Hurricane Barrel as it moves into the Gulf of Mexico. And here's the main player. So this is our, our tropical steering chart. So we're looking at the upper level uh, steering patterns here. And a couple, one big feature to note, there's gonna be a strong area of upper level high pressure centered over the Southeast US. Here's Barrel, and potentially, if you'll see on the right side of the screen, we may have another tropical system trying to form in the wake of Barrel. So let's go ahead and roll this forward in time. And the big question mark is going to be, I think, the long-term strength of this ridge of high pressure centered over the Southeast. This will generally 
guide barrel to the west. So there's again your high, maybe starting to weaken just a little bit here, but that will keep barrel on a west and west northwest track in the short term. I think what we'll have to watch is any kind of weakening in this ridge on its western face. And I, that's what some of our long-term modeling is now suggesting, that there will be some kind of weakness. And you also notice that the position of the high continues to shift a little bit to the east. So that could provide an avenue for barrel to start making more of a west-northwest or northwesterly turn. So I am thinking that by the time we get towards the end of the week and next weekend, we'll have to start paying closer attention on the western Gulf Coast, anywhere from western Louisiana down the Texas Gulf Coast, anywhere all the way down through the Mexican Gulf Coast, anywhere along the Bay of Campeche. Again, this forecast is uh, not set in stone by any means. Keep in mind, this is still a good five, six, seven days out, and we could certainly see some changes. But this has been something that we've noticed some of the global models indicating, again, a weakness on the western side of this ridge that could provide uh, an avenue for this storm to make a turn to the north and west. So that is certainly something that we'll have to watch long term. At least in the short term, we don't have to pay uh, no immediate threat there along the Gulf Coast, but I think interest should be paid uh, attention there by the end of next week, around the 4th of July, and then you'll notice in by next weekend, we could be talking about, <clears throat> excuse me, a significant system in the uh, western Gulf of Mexico. The other two areas that we're watching, Invest 94 in the Bay of Campeche, hurricane hunters are investigating this, air, this area here. We may see a tropical depression try to spin up, although the time frame is very short for this to get its act together as it will be moving its way through the uh, through central Mexico. Now, that second system that I referenced earlier that is sitting behind Barrel, that is a tropical wave, and now with a high chance of development according to the National Hurricane Center. And this could follow a track very similar to Barrel. Um, and uh, again, a lot of our models suggest that we will see a system try to organize here as we move you through the next couple of days. So, a lot going on, obviously, one of the strongest June hurricanes on record in the Atlantic Basin um, has now formed in now Category 4 Hurricane Barrel, and we're expecting the conditions to deteriorate rapidly in the Windward Islands tonight. We'll bring you more updates on Hurricane Barrel, and as well as the rest of the tropical Atlantic throughout the weekend and into next week.